Welcome to Elite Medical Prep's 5-Minute Q Review. My name is Marcel Bruce Dramer, and today we're going to do a rapid high-yield review of USMLE Step 1 question. Some of this discussion will also be useful for those preparing for Step 2 and Step 3. Okay, let's get to our question, because as on test day, time is precious. So here's our question. I'll read it for you. A 48-year-old man is brought to the emergency room one hour after acute onset of chest pain radiating to his back, shortness of breath, diaphoresis, and weakness. He has a history of glaucoma and two episodes of spontaneous pneumothorax. He's noted to be 6 foot 8 tall and weighs 190 pounds with a BMI of 20.9. On physical exam, there is a weakly palpable pulse in his right arm and neck. What is the most likely diagnosis? And our answer choices here are as follows. A. Myocardial infarction, B. Aortic dissection, C. Traumatic aortic rupture, D. Septic endocarditis, E. Coarctation of the aorta, F. Takiyasu's arteritis, G. Pulmonary embolism. Please note that this vignette is the first half of a two-part question, and the second part will come shortly. Cardiovascular questions are the core of the USMLE, so these kinds of questions are very important to master. In every cardiac question, it's crucial to identify what type of pain the patient is having. In real-life acute cardiac disease, it's much more complicated than this case. But on the USMLE, the symptoms are supposed to be unambiguous, and they should lead directly to a diagnosis. Here, the chest pain radiates to the back. This is classic for an aortic pathology. Since the aortic course is anterior to posterior in the chest and then descends along the spine, this would eliminate myocardial infarction. Next, we should eliminate septic endocarditis, since there are no signs of infection. Most importantly, there's no fever. Also paying attention to time, we know that the patient's pain is acute in onset, and thus both coarctation and tachyasus should be eliminated. Also note that neither of these diseases fit the demographics of this patient. Finally, additional clues, such as the patient's tall, thin body habitus, his BMI is at the low end of normal, and his weak pulse in the right arm, lead to a diagnosis of aortic dissection. After facing a fairly complex clinical vignette, now we face a straightforward question, which is the second part of our two-part question. It says, a defect in which of the following proteins is the likely underlying cause of the patient's syndrome? With the answer choices as follows, A, fibrillin, B, alpha-1 antitrypsin, C, amyloid beta, D, glial fibrillary acidic protein, and E, notch 3. This is a straight memorization question. Even though the USMLE has progressively phased out these kinds of questions, they still lurk around the corners of the test. Before answering this question, I should take a brief moment to suggest that anyone preparing for the USMLE should strongly consider incorporating flashcards into their preparation. Flashcards, especially when used appropriately, can really help with memorizing the immense number of details that the test can throw at you. Here the question asks, what is the defective protein that leads to the complications in patients with Marfan syndrome, such that they develop aortic dissection and other manifestations of their disease? The answer, it's fibrillin. If you were making flashcards for this question, an appropriate flashcard might look like this, with the information as follows. Extracellular matrix component, many genes can cause a defect, defective in Marfan's disease, and also defective in Ehlers Danlos. Notice the flashcard that we put up here only has a limited amount of information. We at Elite Medical Prep recommend no more than five bullet points per card, but there's much more than just what to put on the card. It's important to incorporate them correctly into your study plan and then to decide when to use them as well as how many cards to make and what subjects to emphasize. A full discussion of flashcards is beyond the scope of this discussion today but it's something that our tutors work on with all of our students. So we've, su we've successfully answered both parts of our two-part question. However, the key to great USMLE preparation is learning all the angles of high-yield questions such as these. Our discussion today was limited, but additional questions worth exploring include what are the risk factors for aortic dissection? Histologically, what layer of the aortic wall is damaged in aortic dissection? What are the classic associations with Takiyasu's arteritis. What about coarctation? What clinical findings are seen in septic endocarditis? Which organs are most commonly affected by the emboli? Which organs are most commonly affected by alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency? 
I want to thank you for watching this five-minute Q, Q review from Elite Medical Prep. Elite Medical Prep combines excellence in medicine and excellence in teaching to create elite test preparation. More information about our services can be found on our website at www.elitemedicalprep.com or at the email address or phone number below. Thank you.